Retiming Physics, Part 1, The Speed of Light, Rotational, Not Linear. The basis of the speed of light is not linear, but rotational spin. If true, this description of the speed of light could unite the two major fields of physics, Einstein's relativity and quantum mechanics. The two fields have big differences. Based on their descriptive and mathematical models, the two fields don't talk to each other like Sunnis and Shiites. Quantum physics does a better job with small things, that is, the inner space of an atom. Relativity does a good job working with the big picture of the universe, that is, outer space. A major basic difference between the two fields is how the two fields define energy. For relativity, Albert Einstein's equation was E equals mcc, in which energy equals mass times the speed of light times the speed of light. For quantum mechanics, Max Planck's equation was E equals hf, that is, energy is equal to the Planck's constant h times the frequency f of the light wavelength. Most people are familiar with Einstein's formulation for energy, yet it is not the number one equation among physicists. Most physicists use the equation of energy devised by Max Planck, E equals hf, that is, energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the radiation. The 1 to 9 ratio of relativists to quants in the field physics conveys how the more one knows about Einstein, the less one buys the popular myths. This is also true of the religions that parents force on kids. The more you know, the less you believe in myths. Another major sticking point of disagreement is the nature of gravity. Understanding the speed of light as rotational, rather than linear, can revolve the disagreements. Consider a car on a lift with its wheels spinning at 60 miles an hour. If one's measuring is based solely on the speedometer connected to the wheel, one would say the car is moving at 60 linear miles per hour. However, one would be wrong. Spinbarism, the first level of timism's periodic table of existence, is premised on the speed of light being rotational spin rather than linear movement. The real phenomenon is the spinning tire, not the linear movement of the car, which is an epiphenomenon. The spinning wheel moves the car linearly rather than the reverse. Of course, if the wheel is on the ground spinning at 60 miles per hour, then both the wheel and the car are moving at 60 miles per hour. The basic driving phenomenon is the wheel spinning, while the car movement is the dependent epiphenomenon. From spinbarism and the wheel analogy, one can correct Einstein's energy statement of E equals mcc that is, showing the description or phenomenon behind the perspective or epiphenomenon. The opposite sides of a tire are both moving at the same speed. If spinning at the speed of light, one would have c times c times mass of spinning object. This might torque your interest. E equals mcc is a better description than the squared version. The latter never appeared in his original 1905 10-page paper outlining relativity. Prior to Einstein and Planck was Newtonian physics, a hallmark of which is force equals mass times acceleration, F equals ma. Consider how a wheel has mass and its imparted force is based on how fast it is spinning. The faster the spin, the more force or energy the wheel can impart to any object that it encounters. The torque of an object is the aggregation of Newton's F equals ma 
for the matter composing the spinning object. Thus, the torque of a spinning wheel can be argued to fulfill Einstein's energy definition since the spinning wheel is traveling in opposite directions at opposite points, 60 miles per hour forward and 60 miles per hour backwards. Thus, a spinning wheel has the energy of its mass times its speed times its speed. Consider the difference between the force of a baseball traveling at 100 miles per hour and one spinning at 100 miles per hour. The latter would definitely burn up a glove rotating at about 200 times per second. Now consider the force inherent in the smallest particle spinning at the speed of light. It might be a neutrino or smaller. In spin barism, it is called TM. A TM is not only the smallest dynamo, but is the basis of electromagnetic forces measured by quantum mechanics as the basis for their system of understanding matter. Spin barism simplifies Einstein's off-centered forward leap backwards to simple Newtonian physics. It also explains quantum mechanics. Spin barism proposes a basic process that is a holy trinity where MA equals MCC equals HF. Marrying relativity and quantum mechanics is simple by considering the nature of an unbalanced wheel which wobbles or precesses. This imbalanced wheel with worn spots has a lot of analogies in it. For example, where the greater force is exerted that causes the balding spots. An unbalanced wheel has less energy than a balanced wheel. Would you rather be struck by a balanced, non-wobbling circular saw blade or by an imbalanced, flip-flopping blade? Same question for a tire coming off of a car. Hit by a balanced or an imbalanced tire. The energy that a wobbling wheel imparts depends on its frequency. That is, the more it wobbles, the lower the frequency of wobbles and the lower the energy the wheel can impart. This is Planck's E equals HF. Physicists measure the TM's wobble or precession. Thus, if one proposes a primary particle, a TM, that spins at the speed of light, one can simultaneously explain from this one description both relativity and quantum mechanics from Newtonian physics, a lovely, simple trifecta for physics. With spin barism, the spin bars or bears reaction, explaining physics, then relativity and quantum mechanics become quaint, unnecessary information, like Ptolemaic calculations. Unfortunately, NIH will keep the archaic siblings around for a long time. Among the many supporting phenomenon for spin barism is the light properties of supernovas. The higher frequency lights arrive first, from which astronomers prepare to watch the lower frequencies when they arrive. This is like a balanced tire covering more linear distance for a given rotational speed compared to a wobbling tire. Energy or force imparted by wobbling or precessing object is based on its frequency and point of contact. This the basis of E equals HF. The highly worn areas reflect the greater force imparted to the road surface, which wears away the tire at the spot faster. Those bald spots are visible examples of quantums, the packages of energy envisioned by physicists that come in waves. As the imbalanced tire or TM wobbles or precesses, it exerts a simple F equals MA in the direction of extreme angle deviation. Supernovas are like prisms that separate out light frequencies. However, supernovas use the vastness of space to more readily show that wobblier TMs take more time to wiggle along. 
If the speed of light is based on the rotational spin of the TM, is it possible to speed up the spin? What does this mean for Einstein's claim of nothing can go faster than the speed of light? In sailing, something that most people don't know, let alone understand, is how a boat can sail into the wind by tacking. Wind tacking occurs in a dentist chair within the suction tube. Will a few mile per hour suction trump the air molecules that ricochet at over 7,000 miles per hour? The dental vacuum is insufficient to keep dislodged oral debris from previous patients from tacking upwind into the patient's mouth. Whether on the open sea or on the dental seat, tacking into the wind is like going against the overall flow with energy imparted by the passing masses, molecules, or matter. To go against the wind or spin takes only a small amount of energy consistently applied to go faster and faster like a grandpa pushing a merry-go-round faster and faster with calculated pushes. In physics or chaos theory, this little leading to a lot is called the butterfly effect. Another similar situation is a whip that at the tip cracks the sound barrier. or gravitational slingshot. If one understands how the precession of TMs creates the stability of gravity and mass out of matter, one understands how the gravitational slingshot is at play in propelling TMs to a speed faster than the claimed limit of the speed of light. Given the near infinite number of collisions between TMs at each moment, one can conclude that Mother Nature cracks the whip by tacking some TMs into Higgs Ocean at speeds greater than Einstein's claim limits of 186,000 miles per second. Spinbarism requires a paradigm shift as to the nature of energy, light, and time. Most people have considered the Earth flat rather than a sphere. After all, it appears flat. Likewise, light appears to travel flat, but travels spherically. Archaic, primitive concepts of energy and light limit physics. Ill-grounded understandings evolute like the religious systems based on revealed truths rather than reasoned truth. Light is not what we focus on as human seeing. Light is just another range of frequencies in the spectrum of spinning teons. Time as we know it is a human construct. For Mother Nature, the important corresponding and real phenomenon is the stability of a dynamic system. Einstein's contributions were limited by his flawed understanding of time, flaws that required a double negation, that is, warping time and space. In looking at the TM's property from different perspectives, and categorizing the measurements as basic particles and forces, physicists are like the blind men describing the elephant, right to left, a snake, a wheel, a tree, a trunk, and a phallus. In summary, because physicists conceive light in a certain limited way, they measure and experiment in certain limited ways with almost unlimited money.